Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsay Nelson. If I were to ask you where you spent the last four holiday Christmas seasons, could you answer? The senior members of the 1984 University of Tennessee football team can tell you they spent the last four Christmases playing in a holiday bowl game for the Big Orange of Tennessee. The past four football seasons have found the Tennessee Vols spending part of their holidays a bowling. First, it was the Garden State Bowl at the Meadowlands across the Hudson River from New York City. In a tense struggle that went right down to the wire, Tennessee, setting a batch of passing records, defeated Wisconsin 28 to 21. Then came the 1982 season, capped by an appearance in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. Again, it was a nail biter, but this time, Iowa emerged with a 28 to 22 victory over the Vols. In 1983, the delights of Central Florida gave the Vols a most enjoyable holiday in the atmosphere of Orlando, Florida. The Florida Citrus Bowl game matched Tennessee against Maryland, and again, the margin of victory was only a touchdown. But this time, Tennessee came out ahead, 30 to 23, as Johnny Jones set the stage for his all-star season of 1984. One year later, the unbroken string of consecutive bowl games placed Tennessee again in a festive setting for the holiday season. This time, it was the West Texas town of El Paso, where the Vols enjoyed the matchless hospitality of their Sun Bowl hosts, and then met Maryland in the 50th Sun Bowl game on December 22nd. The Vols get on the scoreboard first in the opening period as Johnny Jones caps a 69-yard drive by scoring from the two-yard line. The defense was superb throughout the first half. Here, quarterback Frank Reich chased from the pocket, fumbles, and Dale Jones, a sophomore All-America, makes the big play in recovering a fumble that leads to a field goal. The score becomes 13 to nothing early in the second quarter. After this pass from Tony Robinson to Johnny Jones sets up another field goal. Whenever Fouad Reves is called on to kick, it's money in the bank for the volunteers. This time he scores from 53 yards. As time runs out in the first half, Tony Robinson adds more to the score. He connects with Tim McGee for a six-yard touchdown. Deciding it's time for a two-point conversion, the ball send McGee across the goal line again. And this time, Robinson hits him with the play that makes the score 21 to nothing. The bright spots in the second half are few and far between for the Tennessee Vols. This is certainly one of the better moments. Manuska, and he's going to bring it out. Going to the far oh, side. Some... The alley is there to the 30, 35, 40, 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. He's to the 10. Touchdown. Pete Panuska's 103-yard kickoff return was not enough as Maryland eked out a 28-27 victory. It was a season of exciting games, of record-setting performances, and of sold-out stadiums. Coach Johnny Majors was happy to have his team playing in the Sun Bowl. We were very happy that we had a chance to go to our fourth consecutive bowl game, to the Sun Bowl, the third oldest bowl game in the United States of America. It was a great trip, rewarding experience for primarily a group of seniors who helped bring pride, unselfishness, and continuous winning attitude to our football program, and as a reward to our football team 
a team that played a lot of good football during the course of the 1984 season. I'm very proud of the way our team matured and came along as the season uh, progressed. I think it's a, it's a great example of the unselfishness and the resiliency that our football team has shown, particularly this year. We lost our starting quarterback from last year and Henderson. We lost three fine defensive linemen. We had a young offensive line, young receiving core, new quarterbacking. And all of those things were really question marks in our football team. But after a couple of disappointing games early, we came back and made a couple of great comebacks against Alabama and Georgia Tech. We played a lot of young people after having several people hurt on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage. And we really showed maturity, better soundness defensively the last half of the season. And our offensive team became the most productive offensive unit in Tennessee history thanks to the maturity of Robinson, the young offensive lineman, and the young receivers. What you're going to see the next few minutes is the path that took us to the Sun Bowl. It's a gorgeous evening for football as Tennessee opens the 1984 season before 93,727 Orange faithful at Neyland Stadium. Washington State of the Pac-10 provides the opposition. Tennessee hopes to break a streak of four opening game losses. A new quarterback starts the game for Tennessee. His name is Tony Robinson. He wastes no time completing his first pass, an eight-yarder to Tim McGee. Johnny Jones begins where he left off the previous season. He goes 23 yards the first time he touches the ball. Jones ended the night with 203 yards on 30 carries. He scored three touchdowns, including one on this 11-yard scamper in the opening period. The kicking game has always been at the top of Coach Johnny Major's priorities, and it works to perfection on this night, as sophomore Wesley Pryor brings back a kickoff 53 yards to start Tennessee toward a touchdown. Late in the first half, Washington State threatens. Tennessee, protecting a one-point lead, throws back the Cougars on three attempts at the goal line. Washington State must settle for a field goal and a 16-14 lead at intermission. Johnny Jones goes to work early in the second half to put Tennessee ahead. He scores the go-ahead touchdown on UT's first second-half possession. A special team provides another big play. Charles Benton snares this bouncing punt and returns it 64 yards. The defense, baffled by Cougar quarterback Mark Rippon, takes one away from the Washington State quarterback when Vince Clark grabs a tip pass and returns it 12 yards. Sonny Jones saves his most brilliant run for the fourth quarter. Tennessee sends a man in motion first, left, then back, right, handoff goes to the tailback. Up the middle, Johnny Jones. Jones has the ball at the 45. Jones to the, Jones to the 45. Jones to the 40. Jones to the 35. Jones to the 30. 
34 to 27 victory over Washington State is a successful start for the 1984 season. Two weeks after an open date, Utah comes to Nealon Stadium. Johnny Jones picks up where he left off against Washington State. He has another superb night. On the Vols' first scoring drive, Jones has carries of 24 and 23 yards. And he scores the game's opening touchdown on a 15-yard pass from Tony Robinson. In the second quarter, punt returner Charles Benton grabs the spotlight. His spinning, twisting return of a punt sets up a second score that puts the Wilds ahead 14 to nothing. But there is no denying the hero's manner from Mumford, Tennessee's Johnny Jones. He carries 26 times for 197 yards and is named UPI back of the week in the Southeast. Linebackers dancing, they don't blitz. It's Johnny Jones through the right side, 50. Jones, Snitter, get back to the 45. Jones, Jones to the 35. Jones to the 30. Jones to the 25. He is tackled at the 24 yard line. Big, big block at the point of attack by William Howard, the fullback. With a 27-21 victory over the Utes, Tennessee runs its record to 2-0. A tie with Army and a loss to Auburn brings the record to 2-1-1 as Florida prepares to come to Neyland Stadium. Tennessee has a productive offensive show, but some big plays for the Gator offense deprive Tennessee of victory. Tony Robinson and Tim McGee hook up for the Vols' first score. speech to Terry McDaniel sets up a field goal and the ball trail by 10 at the half. Andre Kramer comes up with his first collegiate interception to set up a field goal. It was the second play from the second half, and I saw the quarterback going back, and he started looking that way. And I, just, I said, they're going to try me. And I saw the ball, and uh, I attacked the ball. Were you surprised it came right in your hands? Uh, not really. You know, as a DB, once the ball's in the air, you're like a receiver now, and you go for the ball. Tennessee is down just seven points when linebacker Carl Zander reaches in and forces a Florida fumble. This magnificent catch by Joey Clank Scales in the last period and a series of Tony Robinson completions provide an exciting finish for the game in which Robinson sets a school record with 29 completions and 389 yards total offense. It was a sparkling performance by the young Tennessee quarterback, but Florida emerges with a 43 to 30 victory. The fourth largest crowd in Neyland Stadium history is on hand for the annual shootout with arch rival Alabama. The tie jumps out to a 10-0 lead, but Tennessee gets on the scoreboard when Tony Robinson hits Joey Clank Scales for a touchdown. Right after the kickoff, outside linebacker Dale Jones applies a hit to Ricky Moore that knocks the ball loose. 
The recovery is by Jim Duncan. Tennessee pulls even at 10 points each. Antoine Duvet's his 10th consecutive field goal of the season. From that point until midway through the final period, the game was all Alabama. The tide builds a 27 to 13 advantage, but the Vols respond with one of the most exciting five minutes in ball history. The touchdown pass to Tim McGee pulls the Vols within seven points. Only 4.54 remains. Tennessee defense rises to the occasion and stops the tide, setting the stage for an heroic punt return by freshman Andre Kramer. 3.43 to go in the game. Alabama leads by seven. Snap. Sanders. Tennessee's got the return on. Hits it well. Kramer under the ball at the 45. To the far side and breaks the tackle. To the 50. To the 45. To the 40. To the 35. To the 30. Gets back across the grade. To the 20. To the 15. He has the ball at the 12-yard line. At which point Tennessee will have it first down and 10 to go. And then it's Johnny Jones' turn. With only about two minutes remaining. On the sideline, ball coaches confer vigorously. Timeout is called to discuss the play. Now comes the decisive try for two points. Tony Robinson, the quarterback. Tennessee trying for two. Robinson with the ball. Give him two. Tony Robinson keeps and sneaks. And the Volunteers miraculously have taken the lead over Alabama. Tony Robinson goes for the two-point conversion. The game isn't secure until cornerback Tommy Sims picks off an Alabama pass. And as happened two years before, Neyland Stadium erupts in a spontaneous victory party. Tennessee notches its third consecutive win over the Crimson Tide. The game marks a turnabout and a season which has been filled with highs and lows. With a 3-2-1 record, Tennessee next goes against traditional opponent Georgia Tech in Atlanta. But the Vols get off to a poor start, losing eight yards on three plays. But then Georgia Tech is stunned by the old quick kick play. Jimmy Colquitt sneaks into the game and boots a 64-yarder that is down at the Tech 21. Georgia Tech draws first blood, but Tony Robinson knocks the count at seven apiece with a touchdown run early in the second quarter. Two all-time career records are about to fall. Tailback Johnny Jones runs past Kurt Watson's career record of 2,364 yards rushing. This for Audrey's 32-yard field goal puts the senior from Miami ahead of Gene McEver on UT's all-time scoring list. Still, Tennessee trails 14 to 13 at halftime. The stage is set for another exciting finish. With eight minutes left, Tony Robinson finishes an 87-yard drive with an 11-yard touchdown pass to Vince Curtis. Coach Johnny Majors decides to go for two points, and Robinson fires to Charles Wilson in the end zone. Tech came back to score on only two plays, and Tennessee again takes possession with 7.22 remaining, and the ball's trailing by a point. Robinson finds Vince Carter on third down and 12 for 15 yards to keep the drive going. Then comes the most crucial play of the game. It's Robinson. Crucial, crucial fourth down play. Robinson looking to throw. Pass is complete. Fall down. Breaking free to the 35. To the 30. Smith to the 25. Smith to the 15. Smith to the 10-yard line. It was fourth down and I guess about five or six. And uh, out of everybody you could have called on, we called on the tight end. And the thought was just catch the ball and get the first down. And as it turned out, caught the ball and strong safety missed the top. And I turned it up for a big game. Only a minute and a half remains. The ball is squarely in the middle of the field. 
and it's Quad Reveille's time for Tennessee. Tennessee posts a thrilling 24-21 victory over the Yellow Jackets. The Vols return to Knoxville to face Memphis State in homecoming two weeks later. The old grads get a wet welcome for homecoming, but conditions can't stop the alumni band from performing, nor can they diminish enthusiasm for singing Sir Charlie Daniels at halftime. And nothing can slow the volunteers as they administer a 41-9 route. Things get off to an excellent start when Johnny Jones bursts through a stacked Tiger defense for the Vols first score. Johnny's effort covers 61 yards. Quarterback Tony Robinson is the offensive star. He passes for 52 yards to Tim McGee. He calls this quarterback draw for 25 yards. Virtuoso performance, Robinson passes here for another touchdown. This one a 34-yarder to McGee. Tennessee opens the second half with a 27-3 lead, and the defense accepts the task of halting Memphis State's efforts at a comeback. Linebacker Joe Kofer makes the crucial hit on fourth and one to keep the Tigers from scoring. Later, freshman cornerback Andre Kramer intercepts his second pass of the season and makes a 14-yard return to get the ball scoring drive in motion. Reserve tailback Charles Wilson, another freshman, scores from 46 yards to make the score 34 to three. Tennessee scoring for the day ends when tight end Jeff Smith catches a 24-yarder from Robinson. Reserves played most of the fourth period, and Vic Peppers, a diminutive freshman defensive back, sets the tone as he makes an interception in his first game at Tennessee. The win is the third in a row for the Vols, and Tennessee's ninth straight over Memphis State. A jubilant Tennessee dressing room celebrates the homecoming victory over Memphis State. We're Let's don't forget how these games have been enjoyable the last three outings and how these locker rooms have been spontaneously exciting and fun. Now, congratulations to the offensive team and staff. Great plan. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. And great execution. Yeah. Congratulations to the defensive staff and a great effort by the defensive team. Right, yeah. Yeah. Congrats, kicking. We had a lot of good things, folks. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Happy homecoming. One day. Hallelujah.
Bob in. It's on to Jackson, side of some big orange debacles in the past. There's no jinx to be overcome this time as Tennessee gets its fourth consecutive win at the expense of Ole Miss, 41 to 17. Wild Reves connects on an SEC record 15 consecutive field goal to get the route underway. Tony Robinson hooks up with his favorite target, Tim McGee, to put the balls ahead 10 to nothing early in the second quarter. Ole Miss quarterback Kent Austin never returns after Dale Jones and Richard Cooper combine to apply this hit late in the first half. Tennessee blows it wide open in the third quarter. Johnny Jones goes over the 1,000-yard mark for the season in this game as he caps an 80-yard drive with this touchdown run. Two first-year freshmen teamed up to put the game out of reach at 24-3 with this defensive sparkler early in the third period. Linebacker Jesse Messimer blocks the rebel punt. That's cornerback Vic Peppers who picks up the loose ball and scores. Tony Robinson keeps the offense in high gear with passes like this one to Jeff Smith. It was a field day for the Tennessee offense, the Volunteers winning 41-17. Finally, after a narrow loss to Kentucky, the end of the regular season, a bright sunny day in Nashville. The Vols faced their traditional closing rival, Vanderbilt. It would be memorable as one of Tennessee's most dominating performances in the nearly century-old rivalry between the two intrastate schools. Three plays in the second period set the tone for the victory. Freshman Bob Garman, making his first punt as a volunteer, sees his push kick take a fortunate bounce and roll out of bounds at the Vandy six. And then on Vandy's next play, Richard Cooper, Robbie Scott, and Reggie McKenzie converge on the Vandy quarterback, who is tackled in the end zone for a safety. The ball lead is five to nothing, but the fireworks have only begun. One play after the ensuing free kick, Johnny Jones takes a pitch to the left side and turns upfield like he has so many times in his illustrious Tennessee career. Jones breaks the tackle, spins, and rambles 57 yards into the end zone to put Tennessee ahead 12 to nothing. Later, the senior running back captures his second SEC rushing championship. The Vols explode for two touchdowns early in the second half. Quarterback Tony Robinson, who passes Jimmy Streeter's six-year-old total offense record, connects with his favorite target, Tim McGee, for a 19-yard scoring pass. Robinson, looking in trouble, eludes the blitz, looks downfield into the end zone. Oh, touchdown, Tennessee! Tim McGee on the catch. Robinson on the great move to free himself, and then he sees the wide open McGee. On the Vols' next series, it's Robinson to McGee again. This time on a beautifully executed 55-yard touchdown pass to give the Big Orange a commanding 26 to nothing advantage. It gives McGee a new single-season pass-catching record. I just threw it up there and let him run up under. I thought it was too short at first, but once he caught the ball, you know, he started spreading down the field. I was real happy about you that. You only threw it 70 yards, you know that. Well, you know, it was just a little something. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you know, I can have a lot more of those in the future. Tennessee goes on to win the game. 29 to 13, setting the stage for the Vols' appearance in the Sun Bowl three weeks later. Head coach Johnny Majors looks ahead enthusiastically to his ninth season 
as head coach of the Big Orange. And now to look forward to 1985. I look forward to it with a lot of anticipation and a lot of excitement. I think we can have an exciting football team at Tennessee. Uh, we have experienced quarterbacking. Uh, we have some offensive linemen we think we can build around. We have several returning receivers. Uh, we'll have to replace some running backs, but we think we can have good running backs. I hope that we can replace the kicking game. Uh, defensively, we have several returners. We'll miss two outstanding linebackers, but we must fill those spots right away. I think that we have a sound football program that can remain continuously competitive because of discipline I think that we have. I think we have the most unselfish football program I've been around at any time. I think we can have an exciting, competitive team in 1985 with a good chance to win on any given Saturday. And we're going to be playing in the most competitive conference in America, the Southeastern Conference. Plus, we'll be playing one of the most exciting intersectional schedules in America, starting with the UCLA Bruins on September the 14th, 1985 in Neyland Stadium.